Welcome to my lab. I'm Drew Collip. In today's lab, we're going to count cells using a hemocytometer in a compound microscope. The microscopes are located underneath the bench. Please hold it with two hands when you take it out. You plug the microscope in. Let's go through some of the features now. We have the on off button, light adjustment, focus adjustment, stage manipulator, we have our stage clamp, our objective lenses, low power, medium power. Always start on low power magnification. Then switch up to medium power when using the hemocytometer. We have our iris diaphragm down below here, slides open. With a lower diaphragm, we want to adjust it so the light is just reaching the edges of our field of view and the Iris diaphragm, we want to close it to try and increase the amount of contrast. We have a binocular ocular lenses here. What you should do is you put in focus with the right side one and then adjust it with the left side one to make sure it is even for both eyes in terms of focus. Again, we always start at lowest magnification. Here we have our hemocytometer. It has a laser etched grid on it, and we'll use that to count our cells. Inside you'll find two things. You'll find a weighted cover slip. This is different than a cover slip you'd use for a wet mount. It is heavier. Please be careful with it. It's a bit expensive. And here's a hemocytometer. It is very expensive. There are two sides to it. Put the cover slip on in portrait view, and we load it with the two Vs right there. Load there, and load there. Before we get started though, we'll make sure it's clean. Don't assume the person who used it before you did a proper job cleaning it. We'll wash it with isopropanol and wipe it down with a Kim wipe. Please be careful not to push too firmly. You can crack this weighted cover slip pretty easily. I like to rub my gloves on there just to get off any dust that may have come off the Kim wipe. We'll do the same thing with our hemocytometer. Wash it with isopropanol and wipe it down. Make sure you have a firm grasp. Do not drop this and break it. To begin, we'll place the cover slip on top in portrait view. And then we'll take our sample, our cells. Remember they sink to the bottom, so make sure you invert it before you sample it. And you'll dilute this in tripan blue. I've done this already. I've taken 100 microliters of cells and 100 microliters tripan blue, a one-to-one -one dilution. I will then load this on both sides of the hemocytometer. Before I sample, I'll pipe it up and down to make sure the sample is fully mixed. And there's no exact amount we're going to load into the hemocytometer. We're going to load it in until both sides are fill, but not overfilled. I'll use my finger to stabilize it and place it in where the V is, making sure there's no bubbles, spin it around and load the other side. If you overfill it or there's bubbles, redo it. I'll save the extra in case I make a mistake and have to redo it. And now we're ready to count cells. Place it on the stage with the stage clamp and then view at low magnification. There is a laser etch grid on both sides of the hemocytometer. If you look at it on low power, we can see nine P squares. One, two, three, 
four, five. We'll count these five p-squares on each side of the hemocytometer. Notice the corners are four by four grids. The middle is five by five. Once you have it in focus on low power, switch to medium power. At medium power, the field of view should encompass one whole p-square. As we zoom in on a higher magnification, we can see now a p-square in more detail. You can see the cells. You can also see where some things have been stained with tripan blue. These items here would just be artifacts. These would not be actual dead cells. So you would not count those as dead cells. This one would be in the lower corner of your hemocytometer. Now you can see here, this is a four by four grid. So we're going to count all 16 of these S squares in the one P square. To do that, we'll start in the top left-hand corner, moving back and forth, count the number of cells in each square like this. One problem you'll have here is that if cells are on the outer edge of your p-square, do you count them or do you not count them? What we do is you pick two sides. In my lab, we do not count cells that are touching the top edge or the right edge. We do count cells that are touching the bottom edge and the left edge. In the end, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent when counting your cells. So pick two sides. If the cell is touching that edge and it's a side you're not going to count, don't count it. If it's touching the edge that you are going to count, please do count it. I counted the number of cells in this p-square, and I determined there were 97 live cells. These are those clear cells, and there are no dead cells. I see no cells that are stained blue. I do see some blue artifacts in there, but I do not believe they are cells, so I will not count them. So I would record 97 live cells, zero dead cells, and 97 total cells. That's the sum of the live and the dead cells. I do want to point out on the far right side, there is a piece of fluff probably from the chem wipe. The tripan blue did stain it and now it is on our slide. Thankfully it's not covering the p-square. Uh, in the video you maybe noticed I didn't actually wipe the hemocytometer with my gloved hand. That is a good practice to get into. Wash it with isopropanol, wipe it with a chem wipe, and then wipe it with your gloved hand, a clean gloved hand. This way any fluff from the chem wipe will be taken off. Now it can be a challenge to count these cells one at a time. As a result, we use a tally counter to quickly count these cells. I scan through, back and forth through the S squares and every time my brain registers a new cell, I click the button. This is what the tally counter looks like and how it works. You can see we press this button. Every time we press it, it goes up by one. So we can quickly count our cells read off, record our data, and then reset it by turning this knob on the side. Again, press the button every time you see a cell, and then at the end, reset it, like so. Let's count the rest of the cells. We look at the bottom left-hand corner. I see 109 live cells, no dead cells. I look at the top Left corner, I see 72 live cells and one dead cell. The dead cell would be in the second box from the lower corner. Here is the top right corner. I see 101 live cells, no dead cells. And the middle square, I see 124 live cells and no dead cells. Notice there's a little bit of clumping in here, so make sure you're pipetting up and down to break up those clumps. We'll now count five squares on the other side. So here is the bottom right corner, 103 live cells, one dead cell. You can also see some fluff from the chem wipe on here. The bottom left corner, 90 live cells, no dead cells. We now move to the top left corner. I see 82 live cells and one dead cell. In the second one from the top, there's a dead cell. We move to the top right corner, 77 live cells I saw here. And finally, we move to the middle square. Remember, it's 25 by 25. And here I see 56 live cells and one dead cell. But now I'll take that data and do our calculations.
Let's now complete our calculations for the hemocytometer. Please recall, we counted p squares. We counted five per side. One, two, three, four, five. When we counted our first p-square on side A, we had 97 live, 0 dead for a total of 97 total cells. We counted p-square number 2 on side A, we got 109, 0 dead, therefore 109 total cells. We had one dead cell in p-square 3, giving me a total of 73 cells. 101, 0, 101, and 124, 0, 124. This is very common to not have many or any dead cells on the hemocytometer. We move to the other side. We counted five p-squares, 103 live, one dead, 104. 90 live, zero dead, 90 total. 82 live, one dead, 83 total. 77, zero, 77. And 56 live, one dead, give me a total of 57 cells. Now using this data, I can calculate the concentration of live cells, dead cells, and total cells. We're going to be using this data to compare it to the data from the Coulter counter. Recall, the Coulter counter doesn't count cells, it counts particles. As a result, it does not distinguish between live or dead cells. We must compare the total concentration from the hemocytometer. As a result, I'm going to add up the total cells in all 10 squares. When we do that, we counted 918 cells in 10 squares. We're going to take an average in the 10. So 918 cells divide by 10 squares. So we have 91.8 cells averaged in 10 p squares. Now we know the number of cells in a single p square. Now I need to look at my dilution and the volume. In terms of dilution, we took one part cells and we added to that one part tripan blue. Therefore, our dilution is 1 to 2, giving me a dilution factor of 2 to 1. The volume of one p square we can calculate based on the dimensions. A p square is 1 millimeter long, 1 millimeter wide, and the depth between the hemocytometer and the cover slip is 0 0.1 millimeters. Multiply those together, 0 0.1 millimeters cubed. Now, millimeters cubed is a volume, but in the lab, we don't deal with millimeters cubed. We talk about milliliters. So now I have to convert between millimeters cubed and milliliters. Please note, one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. That's actually the definition of a milliliter. So if I can convert millimeters cubed to centimeters cubed, it's a very simple conversion to convert to milliliters. Let's do that now. Write down what I'm given. 0 0.1 millimeters cubed. I want to get rid of millimeters, I place it on the bottom. I want to convert to centimeters, I place it on the top. We compare millimeters to centimeters. In one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. However, we're not dealing with millimeters here, we're dealing with millimeters cubed. I can do the same thing to the top and bottom. I'm going to cube it. As a result, those get cubed and those get cubed. One cubed is just one. We have 10 cubed. So one centimeter cubed is 10 to the three millimeters cubed. After that, we'll convert from centimeters cubed to milliliters, and that's a one to one ratio. And then we cancel out. Millimeters cubed cancels millimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed cancels centimeters cubed. We're left with milliliters. We have 0.1 divided by 10 to the 3. We have 10 to the minus 4 milliliters. So the volume of 1 p square is 10 to the minus 4 milliliters. So we have the average number of cells in 1 p square. We have the volume of 1 p square. And we have our dilution factor to work backwards to determine what the concentration was in our original test tube. So now we can determine the average total concentration of cells in that original test tube. So to do that, we take the number of cells in one p-square, we divide by the volume of one p-square, and we multiply by our dilution factor to convert the concentration on the slide to the concentration 
in the test tube. We work that all out. Round that off to three significant digits. And we get 1.84 times 10 to the 6 cells per mil. This again is total cell concentration. We can also calculate percent viability. This is the percentage of cells that are alive. So this is the total number of cells and the number of live cells on the top. It's a percentage, so you multiply by 100%. Now, we know we had 918 cells, total cells. The question is, is how many live cells did we have? Let's go back to the data. Here's our data. Instead of counting live cells, let's count dead cells. I have one, two, three, four. So to get the number of live cells, I subtract four dead cells from the total. 914. Do the math now, and we get 99.5642701015. We're going to round that off to three significant digits, 99.6% viability. This tells us that 99.6% of the cells in our sample were live. So using this calculation, we can calculate total number of cells. If we use percent viability and apply that to our total cell concentration, we can determine the live concentration of cells and the dead concentration of cells. Now remember, we're not done yet until we've cleaned up. So we'll take apart our hemocytometer, we'll wash the cover slip with some isopropanol, and wipe it down with a Kim wipe. Again, please be careful not to apply too much pressure. These slides can crack pretty easily. Do the same thing with the hemocytometer. Spray it down with some isopropanol, and give it a wipe with the Kim wipe. I wrap this in a Kim wipe just to make sure it doesn't get scratched. And I'll do the same thing with the cover slip. Again, it's clear, it can be lost pretty easily, so I wrap it up in a Kim wipe just so it's easy to find later on. Put them back in the box. and tidy up your workspace, putting everything away. Microscopes go back under the bench. Make sure you hold it with two hands. So in today's lab, we looked at how to count cells using a hemocytometer and a compound microscope. We did the calculations to determine the concentration and the percent viability. We have our leftover cells. Please remember to bleach them when you're done. That's all for today. We'll see you in the lab.